Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about money markets and the theory of liquidity preference. Now in this video we will complete the theory of liquidity preference. In a previous video we've looked at money demand and explained the determinants of this. In the current video we look at money supply and how this combines with money demand in the economy and how the theory of liquidity preference shows that the interest rate adjusts to balance the supply and demand for money. So the money supply curve in the economy, what does this look like? Well, the money supply curve looks like a vertical line. And what happens in this case here is that the relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of money supplied in the economy is zero or money supply is independent of the interest rate. We say this because the money supply is assumed to be controlled by that entity called the central bank. And the central bank can decide on a quantity of money in the economy and buy and sell government bonds in order to adjust the money supply to this. So they uh, control the money supply and it's indeterminate uh, compared to the interest rate is unrelated to it which means that at a interest rate of let's say five percent here the money supply is a hundred billion let's say and if the interest rate were to increase up to seven percent the money supply would still be at a hundred billion in this case so money supply is independent of the interest rate. Now, what does that mean in terms of the theory of liquidity preference? Well, what it means is as follows. The money demand curve we're already after seeing is a downward sloping line. So money demand is downward sloping and we can label that here as money demand. Where money demand and money supply intersect, what this determines is the interest rate or it sets the general structure and tone for the interest rate in a general economy. So in our economy here, the equilibrium interest rate, according to the theory of liquidity preference, would be an interest rate of 5%. And at this level, money supply is equal to money demand, of which there is 100 billion supplied and demanded of money. So that's an equilibrium point here. However, we know in some economies that the interest rate can be too high or too low in the short run. So we'll take a situation here where the interest rate is too high in the economy. It's above the equilibrium. In this situation where the interest rate is at 7%, the money demand is relatively low compared to a relatively high money supply. So people want to hold a lot less cash then there is cash or money supplied available in the economy. In this case, what they might want to do with that excess money is they may wish to deposit it into the bank in savings accounts or maybe invest in bonds for a yield. Now, if there's additional investment and in savings in banks, well, what they can do is they want to minimize their costs so they can start to reduce interest rates. They don't need to entice in more money, it's already coming into the system. So in this case, if they decrease interest rates, well, money demand is going to start to move along the money demand curve here to the right. And we'll see with money supply, we move down to our equilibrium point here. So if we have an excess of money demand, interest rates will tend to decline to the equilibrium. We also have the situation where uh, the interest rate is relatively low. So let's say here we go with an interest rate of 3%. In this situation, we have money demand now is relatively high. Let's say at 120 or 30 billion compared to money supply, which is quite low. So people are demanding a lot more cash than there is cash available in the economy. In this case, people will cut back on the purchase of bonds or they will take their savings out of the bank because they want to increase their money demand. Maybe the economy is growing and they need more cash. And in this situation here to entice in 
uh, money back into the system, back into the banking system or into bonds, what will have to happen is the interest rate will have to rise. And when the interest rate rises, we see here that we come back to an equilibrium point uh, at the 5% again, where money demand has decreased back to 100 billion. So above and below the equilibrium rate, there is a tendency due to interest rates and the signal that sends out for money demand to either increase or decrease back to the equilibrium point, point A over here. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.